And welcome back to our community. Susie Thomas here getting to visit with Jack Hazen and Tony Miliozzi, who uh, just recently won the 50K World Championships. This is the, literally the fastest guy in the world sitting right here. And uh, Jack Hazen, um, famed Olympic coach for long distance running uh, for Team USA. So I know, Jack, you have said that to prepare for a marathon, you really think of it, there's a mindset. And what do you say that is? Well, you certainly don't want to think of it as uh, as the full 26 miles. Uh, it, it's it's better to think of it as a, a, a 20 mile warm up, and then a 6k race. And then when you get to the uh, 20 mile mark, you you look at the you take the two off the 21, mm-hmm. and you go one mile, two mile, and you just have six miles to go, and uh, that, that helps you get in a better mindset and. Uh, and, and makes it more realistic. And also it, it helps the athlete know that they have to conserve energy for that first 20 miles and, uh, and, and be ready to race the last uh, 6.2. So it's not really a race until the very end. Is that how you felt, Tony, as you were doing this? Yeah, like I guess you can compare it to a marathon. Uh, so when you're doing, like, like Coach said, uh, like a 26.2-mile race, uh, a lot of people think halfway 13.1. That makes sense, right? Uh, but – no, usually halfway through a marathon is about 20 miles, and then that's when it gets really challenging. Okay. So a lot of people, if, if you want to stay conservative for the most part uh, through 20-ish miles. and But, yeah, um, so uh, to yeah answer to your question, we were running pretty conservatively at the beginning of the race. Mm-hmm. and But then a Kenyan and a, a Zimbabwe guy uh, both uh, took off around 15 kilometers, which is pretty early in the race. And I matched it the that that first move. We sped up a lot, and uh, maybe by the next lap, they they sped up even more than that. Which and we still weren't even halfway through the race. So I decided to be a little more conservative in that in my approach to my race. And uh, they didn't put too much time on me. They probably put maybe forty forty five seconds at the most on me. But I was just still running my race and uh, keeping pace to what we had initially sped up to. And Eventually, they started fading back, and I was still maintaining my effort. And yeah, and once I caught up to them with about five, ten k to go, um, I started trying to push the pace so uh, make them uncomfortable and, and win. Like any sport, so much of it is mental. And is it how fun is it to know in the back of your mind, hey guys, I could be going so much faster than this. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it's kind still, of holding back a little. It was such a challenging course mm-hmm. that you didn't know what to expect later on in the race. You can feel good at one at one point of the race, and, and if you didn't have the correct nutrition or enough water, you're, you, even if you felt good early, it still can turn bad for you quickly. Well, let's talk about the nutrition and water and so forth. How do you hydrate while you're doing this, and how what do you eat prior to something? Something like this 50k yeah so the race was at 6 p.m which is actually i like because uh, i don't have to wake up super early to eat a meal before an uh, early race so i ate uh about probably 800 to a thousand calories uh for breakfast around 10 a.m and uh then yeah on, on the course what i was drinking and, and taking in uh, we had an awesome support group so uh we had our our team leader her name was susan dunn um for the U.S., and she actually lived in Doha, which it usually doesn't work out like that, and she had everything covered. Uh, I had my own personal as- assistant, I guess you could say, was giving me bottles every 5K of what I wanted, and it was really, really specific, so it was super easy for us uh, who, who were running because they had everything everything down, everything we needed, so I just call out whatever I want, and boom, it was there, so it was just it was awesome. How- so making the United States team, there's all kinds of fun little goodies that come along with that. What were some of those? Yeah, I got a huge suitcase, uh, it was, and it said USA on it, and that's mm-hmm. so exciting. It came in a huge box in the mail. Uh, it was awesome. But, uh, yeah, it came with, like, a book bag, a hat, uh, T-shirts, a long sleeve, a jacket, a couple pairs of pants, socks, uh, Gatorade, uh, Gatorade mix. I mean, just so much stuff. It was awesome. And and Tony got the same gear that the Olympic team gets. Uh, not They get... Uh, even more than that, but uh, mm-hmm. the the singlets and and the uniform that he wore, the warm ups uh, were the same as we had in the Olympic Games. Which you have got really fun, kind of cool extra stuff from that, right? From coaching, right? Right, right. Well, you're going to need this, Tony, because you are going to the Olympic trials on February 13th. You could pack that really great suitcase. Yeah. <laughs> How are you getting ready for those? Yeah, so I took about five, six days off after that 50k, and now I'm back up to pretty much. 100% mileage, and now i got to incorporate a little bit more intensity. But, yeah, uh, 
my girlfriend and I both qualified, and that's in Los Angeles in February. So <laughs> that's too cool. <laughs> yeah, not, not a ton of time to train, but I think I'll be ready when it's time to be ready. So. And now kind of with the weather changing, do you prepare differently? Do you do anything indoors? So uh, my, my family uh, lives in South Carolina, so I will be uh, leaving January 14th and staying there all the way till the race, uh, February 13th. So I'll be in uh, South Carolina for a month to try and mimic uh, the conditions of Los Angeles at that time. A little fair warning, just returned from Los Angeles. It's colder there than here right now. <laughs> That's crazy. It's just crazy. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I'm not yeah, complaining, though. Would, no, <laughs> not complaining one bit. Um, Jack, how rewarding is this to see one of your protégés doing this? Kind oh, of this, thing? Is, this is awesome. And, uh, and uh, Tony mentioned his girlfriend, Sarah Pilatus, who just graduated from Malone last year and, and set our uh, school record in the 10,000 meters. And then in her first marathon ever, and, and to, and she qualified for the Olympic trials and, and gets to go you know, to the same event with Tony. Uh, it, it's it's really gratifying to to have two athletes like that and uh, but you know it, I never dreamed that we would have a a world champion and uh, yeah. we're in the process of getting a, a life size picture of him uh, which we will have up at Malone and and maybe at St. Th- Thomas and <laughs> and uh, maybe at all the Second Soul stores too <laughs> that'll be pretty exciting. Let's give a shout out to Second Soul. That's where you work, correct? Yeah, I work at Second Soul, the, primarily the one in Maslin, our outlet location. People can stop by for autographs? Of course, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, autographs right and of, good deals. Yeah, <laughs> yep. <laughs> and Jack, they can stop by Malone University for autographs from you as well? Right, that's right. Are you ever going to write a book about how to do this? Uh, I, I wrote a book on, on cross country, uh, how to coach cross country. And uh, that was uh, I actually started that in an in 1996 during the Atlanta Olympics when I was down there and uh, got that published. And it, it, I'm so busy with coaching my athletes, you know, with men and women. I have around uh, close to 40 athletes that that uh, on a daily basis I see and work with. So uh, I just don't have the time to, to write another book. It would be fun, but it t- takes so much time. You are – any colleges, any universities dream coach for long distance? What keeps you at Malone? Uh, I, you know, I've always been at Malone uh, for 48 years, and it's just the the uh, the effect that we have on students, both uh, not only from just the athletic standpoint, but uh, the social and the spiritual aspect. Uh, I see so many changed lives and changed people that that uh, that's what keeps me going and that's what's kept me at, at Malone all these years and we just had a big recruiting day a couple of weeks ago maybe it's been more of a month ago uh, we had over 100 people there and I I remember opening the session by saying I'm going to answer a question you all are too polite to ask and that is when is he going to retire how long are you going to keep doing this and <laughs> my ever. response was uh, <laughs> I said I as long as the good Lord gives me good health and I can I have good mental faculties and can remember things uh, I'm, I'm going to coach forever because I just love it here at Mount Union University. No, you did not. <laughs> I you did, did say not. That. <laughs> it got a pretty good laugh. I'm glad they picked up on that. I hope the That's president coaches, was laughing. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and you just have to be so proud of your coach as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've been ex- just extremely blessed with mm-hmm. in high school with Matt Reniker, who's pretty much a professional coach, and then yes. going to Malone, where I have an Olympic distance coach as, yes. as my coach. I mean, I just got <laughs> extremely lucky, so... Uh, yeah, it's definitely not just what I've done. I've, it's, I've had a lot of help along the way. And, yeah, I'm just extremely proud of Coach and everything he's Both done of for you, the program. You know, um, biblically, there are so many analogies to running and running the race and running a long-distance race. What does running – do you learn anything? Are you inspired anyway spiritually through this sport? Yeah, honestly, I've always viewed running as, like, my form of worship um, – I don't attend as church as much as I'd, I'd like to, and so every time I'm out running, I, I honestly, yeah, I, I just say prayers, and, and if I'm by myself, it's it just gets me through the run a lot quicker, and, and that's just my form of worship. Hmm. I would ditto that. That's uh, that's a time that I know uh, because I'm so focused, and it's a habit that I run every day. That that's my quiet time. That's the time I and I don't run. I run with those or my dog, but I don't talk uh, to other people, and it's just a a, a very spiritual time for me as well Hmm. what's the future hold i know the immediate future holds olympic tryouts hey yeah i mean i never expected to be first selected to the u.s team and then to win this race so honestly 
I mean, the sky's the limit. So yeah. the, the goal is to keep improving. Yeah. How about you? Never retiring, not allowed. <laughs> not allowed. I'm I'm going to keep going. Hopefully, as long as I can. It's it's still fun and it's still rewarding, and and I still love working with young people, and I think that's what kind of tends to keep me young. Do you happen to know yet who else is going to be trying out? Any of the folks that you were running against or with uh, at the World Championships, or I guess you'd be running with them as part of the USA team um, and then trying out against them now to make it again onto Team USA for the Olympics. Will you be seeing some old friends? Yeah, well, yeah, my teammates at that event in Doha, uh, most of them are qualified uh, to the uh, Olympic trials, so I'll be seeing them again. It was awesome how much time we spent together there, too. It really formed a lot of new friendships there. And I bet none of them have their girlfriends going along also qualified. They do not. You know, you're <laughs> correct. <laughs> That's just such a story in itself. Well, and I have two, uh, two special athletes that I've, we've known a long time. We used to take our Malone athletes to Mammoth Lakes, California, and train with Dina Castor and Meb Kevlevsky. And they're both uh, over 40 now, and uh, they're both Olympic medalists. And they're wow. both committed to running the trials and trying to make the team again. So I'm kind of rooting for them, oh, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Oh, that'd be inspiring as well. Well, we just can't thank you both enough. Thank you so much, Coach Jack Hazen and Tony Miliozzi, and also our best to Sarah. And best to you, let us know what happens on February 13th. Thank you, Susie. Thanks for representing. So awesome. And thank you for joining us on our community.